I have named this presentation for design and evaluation because I think that we need uh, the the discussion at the not not only at the basic uh, level but also at the engineering application level. This is for FIB, and I think that uh, Frank has emphasized this aspect in his presentation. Um, the content of my presentation is that I am going to to comment uh, on the all values, values of chloride threshold in the literature and, and the breakdown potential and the techniques that were used. Also, the importance of the definition of what we understand as chloride threshold uh, after the probabilistic treatment of the chloride threshold and the limits, uh, the concentration limit for this statistical variability and I will end with some values for design and assessment and the pending questions because we have a lot of questions still but that that should not uh, 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 stop us of just offering engineering solutions. A, a bit of history on the first works. It certainly was not Courbet the first but Courbet was explaining very well about uh, the, the effect of chloride in the in the steel and in all the in all the metals although he was not the first just going into he was working a bit in calcium hydroxide solutions but not in mortar or concrete uh, in mortar or concrete uh, the first work uh, that is mentioned by almost of all of us because I was in these early ages was one that was studying the chloride threshold is the Bosch Hausmann, Doug Hausmann, that was published in a inter very interesting paper in, in 1967 that we mentioned. And until the 80s, there were some, some publications by Gouda, Gouda Montfort, Chris Page, Frida Way, and from BRE Everett, and, and I was also contributing. And is in 82 when Tuti just uh, delivers his thesis when we started to talk about the limit for service life. In that case, we need to distinguish all the, the, the tests that were made for identifying uh, which amount of chloride could initiate corrosion, that they were the first, that was one of the aims of my thesis which is the amount of chloride uh, just developing corrosion uh, because was the, the key question, uh, calcium chloride at that time. Calcium chloride was used as a set accelerator and in that case it, it was needed to know if this is feasible and also uh, in the marine structures. This is a, a presentation, a, a figure from Purve that was using the polarization curves to detect the breakdown potential. When you go into the passive stage, uh, when you have certain amount of, of chlorides, the breakdown of the passive film occurs and your, your current is increased. And he did at all the pHs. In that case, he did the most comprehensive work on relation between chloride concentration and pH and also potential because he was working at different uh, corrosion potential a different potential and these are the figures from Purves work in which we have the, the pitting or the imperfect passivity and the passivity I am not going to go to this uh, the, uh, concept that he was distinguishes the, the breakdown potential from the repassivation potential but here we have for different uh, concentration of chloride that is 0.1 or a point Point 0.1, I mean uh, a minus 3, for different concentration of chlorides we have different uh, fields of potential and pH where you are having depassivation of the steel at, uh, there. And this work was taken by uh, Pietro Pedeferri to explain his concept of cathodic prevention and he did this figure that is also following the, the Curves uh, ideas in which we have the potential and we have the different concentration. Sorry, because I took from a book this figure and I was not able to have uh, in a more clear manner, but I think that you could distinguish in that case when increasing the, the, the chloride content, first the potential is uh, 
uh, in this uh, anodic range is more or less the same for low uh, chloride content and for higher chloride content, you need to lower the potential more in order to obtain finally the cathodic protection or the cathodic prevention for Pietro. And uh, this is coming from the work of Purve. Uh, well, I did, and, and these people that I mentioned and other, we did a lot of polarization curves for just with different solution and different contents of, of chloride in mortar in order to obtain the breakdown potential and the protection potential. In that case, just with the three electrode uh, system, you can detect, as uh, Federica has shown, you can increase the potential until transpassivity. Um, if you don't obtain any uh, any uh, breakdown potential, your your steel is still passive. That means that this amount of chloride is not producing corrosion in this system. But if you have a breakdown before, that means that the the, the this chloride concentration is uh, able to produce depassivation in this uh, condition. And as I was mentioning before, it depends very much whether you use for instance, polarization curves, and even the speed of the polarization curves, that the value of the chloride content changes. In that case, it's very important to link the value that is given when using these electrochemical techniques to the technique itself, because it depends on the conditions that the, the chloride threshold is changing. Uh, OK, and well, uh, they are more positive as smaller is the, re the relation chloride hydroxide because Hausmann was talking always about the relation between chloride and hydroxide that has been emphasized by Rob Melcher when talking about the alkalis and the pH. In reality, of course, if you decrease the pH, as Purve has said, uh, you have this, this risk. These are, uh, from my own work, uh, cells uh, in order to, to have different solutions with different chloride concentration or mortar, because mortar is very easy to handle. It doesn't matter if you have mortar or concrete, you obtain the same uh, relation if you relate to the binder content. And these are uh, potentio potentiodynamic polarization curves, and these are uh, galvanostatic curves. I did also a, a potentiostatic uh, test, but you change the chloride threshold depending on the technique. And this is very important to, to realize when uh, just considering the values of these people that we were interested to limit the amount of chlorides in the mixing water, in the, the raw materials for making concrete. And I arrived to two figures that I took from the paper of Doug Hausman in 67, that is this one, in which he proposed a probabilistic distribution. He took several, I think that were 10 or 12 specimens, and he introduced into solution. His work was, I think that was in solution, but uh, it might be that uh, in saturated lime solution. But I think that he has other two papers in which also he studied in mortar. And he detected that some of them were uncorroded. In that case, the potential goes to the novel value. And when they are corroding, they go to the more cathodic uh, values, to the less novel uh, value. And he just shown this distribution. And this distribution is very interesting because one is for pre-stressing steel and the other is for mild steel control road. In that case, as early as 67, the effect of the roughness of the steel and the type of steel was already studied. And I had the, uh, I was fortunate enough to meet Doug Hausman in a congress and I was talking to him uh, very in, in deep uh, because it was very interesting his work. Uh, he was not a, a researcher, he was a consultant. That also is important for this engineering view. And I had in mind until I was able to do, to try to repeat this uh, statistical distribution. That is to have several uh, bars all in the same condition in order to know how many go in one sense and how many not. Because he explained that this is a stochastic uh, process.
because the roughness of the steel and the composition of the surface of the steel, in that case, not all of the 12 bars will corrode with the, with the, with the concentration he put each time. Well, uh, this early work uh, finished in a digest from BRE uh, that was uh, written by Ken Tridaway, and I think that Everett as well, and he said that this fairly traditional view is that 0.4% chloride by mass of cement represent a low corrosion risk uh, from 0.4 to 1, a medium risk, and above 1, a high risk. And they repeated in other digests. It's important, I met also, of course, Ken Tridaway at that time, and he said 0.4, and he explained, because he said that this is the quantity of chlorides that are bound by the pure Portland cement. In that case, he was convinced that just with 0.4, you don't have free chloride content in the pore water. And the 0.4 comes from that concept. And as they were the BRE and they issued this digest, this value was taken by the coach. This value was passing to the coach. And the coach adopted the 0.4 as the most conservative value. But please remember, is to limit the amount of chlorides in the raw materials to produce concrete. Nothing related at that time with the service life. The, the, this is, uh, I think, that the, the, the work by Tutti, and was, for me, was Tutti the first dealing with the service life prediction. And he did experiments for the chloride threshold. He was working with chloride hydroxide because he was based as well in the work by Hausmann and also by Goldach. They, they, they were working all, always by, by this because, of course, the chlorides just substitute the hydroxide in the metal oxides, and that is why the final depassivation is, is produced. This is a, the reproduction of the figure of the thesis of Tuti, of how he did the, the experiment. He had cement with calcium hydroxide, and this is a spacer, a sample of, of bar, and this is simulated for solution. And he plotted this, that he has the 0.6 uh, of chloride threshold that was, uh, uh, was uh, proposed by Hausmann as an average value. This is an average value. And he was plotted some real value that he was uh, uh, talking or he was experimenting, testing there in that case. Well, it's only to say that uh, Tutti was working in this, has a lot of data in his thesis, uh, but he was expressing as chloride hydroxide and he expressed how to obtain the hydroxide content in a hardened concrete. And he ended with this, that the critical chloride concentrations will be, according to this figure, as 6 to 21 grams per liter of chloride for Portland cement and lower for the slag cement. The, the, these were the two cements he studied in his thesis. Well, uh, the other point is about the definition of the uh, chloride threshold, because this is one of the sources of disagreement among the authors. It has been different manners, variables, and techniques for defining this uh, threshold and, and for determining the pitting potential. In that case, it's normal to have a, a distribution, to have different values, but we need to distinguish whether they come from different tests or they come from the same test, but repeated. And as far as I know, was only Hausmann after Bright and after us that I will present, who did uh, experiments, and now Federica, uh, I think that, well, you, you didn't repeat in the same bar, but repeated with the same uh, type of specimen, uh, several specimens. Uh, also, it's a source of discrepancy to consider free or total chloride, the conversion of concentration in the pore solution by weight of binder or concrete, the case of the cation, because it's different that you have calcium chloride and sodium chloride, the pH is different, and the, the type of steel, the roughness of the steel, the interfacial microstructure, of course. And we discussed that in the Ryland PC uh, on the model assisted integral service life prediction reinforced concrete structures that we had uh, there. But 
I think that is published in one of the papers, but we didn't pay attention how important is the definition. We define for the sake of the of the committee, but we didn't we didn't express especially for for the rest because we thought that is clear enough. But we define it, and I think that this is uh, in agreement with what Rob has presented that the chloride threshold is the concentration that depassivates and maintains the corrosion active during a certain period of time, at least weeks. That means that, as Rob has presented, you may have an activation, but also Federica showed that it might be repassivated or the corrosion may not progress. And only when you have permanent active corrosion, you may uh, be sure that this is the, the passivation threshold that we define in this manner. And I think that it's very important that for the future, we agree and we publish a, a definition uh, on the chloride threshold. Well, uh, because the passivation is not an instantaneous process. We may have a simple single pit. We may have a, a, a higher amount of, of corrosion or a, a, a wider amount. And maybe it might happen that there are years of difference between this and this. As Rob has said, if the concrete is very good uh, condition with very low porosity, maybe the, the corrosion is very low and the corrosion rate, and maybe it takes years that you notice really corrosion in the in the in there. It's not you don't notice cracking and you don't notice anything in spite of you have increasing your area that is corroding. In that case, the, the, the value depends very much on the definition. We did uh, a, a comparison of chloride threshold with Hill de Vietma and Castellote. We tested the same type of concrete by three different methods, natural diffusion in the lab, bonding, potentiostatic, but potentiostatic from the beginning, and migration. That is, uh, we introduced the chloride by migration that we call the integral test. They were concrete specimens, have been fabricated with uh, this type of cement, with step one, and the chloride threshold is different. And we attributed that, of course, migration and, and potential static, they give the lowest values. They are uh, uh, below 2%, I think, or 2-5%. These values I see that are very similar to those published or presented today by Federica. And the natural ones were the, the highest one. Because, of course, the concrete is much age, was much older. Uh, the, the resistivity was much higher because these were almost three or four years and these were much fresh concrete. In that case, again, we need to, to, to distinguish which is the age for uh, uh, just uh, talking about the chloride threshold. And I, I present now uh, the, the work that I consider the, the most illustrative that we did. I was finally trying to repeat or repeating the work of, of Hausmann with 10 different uh, uh, identical specimens that we introduced. There are three here, but they were 10 in a, in a container uh, with water. And uh, we were submitting the specimens, all the specimens, to different potential, not to a set of increasing potential, but some of them were at plus 200, a plus 100, zero, minus 100, or, uh, that is 50, that is 150, 50, minus 50, minus 150, and so on. The, the 10, with six different cements from high aluminum cement, to, uh, with low and high C3A and with flyers. And we obtained this that was published in 2000. Here in this paper, we discussed the different uh, variables that would influence the chloride threshold. And we concluded that this is controlled by the potential and is controlled by the potential at the local place, not in general. These were small specimens because if we have high, big specimens, we will have an average potential, but it's much better to try to have small specimens in order all, all the specimen has the same potential. Here we applied a potential, is, is the, that one. But 
but in any case, it's much better to work in this condition. And we obtained the, the, the corrosion in, in uh, just we broke the specimen as soon as we detect corrosion, we were analyzing the, the sample and just we plotted the potential against the chloride content. And look, the values are in the range that Federica has shown and that I have shown from 0.1 to about 3.3 and 3.5. I mean, as soon as Pietro Pedeferri has stated, if we have a, a potentials above minus 200, we have more or less the same uh, chloride threshold, whatever is the type of cement. However, when we, uh, this was made only with OPC, I think, these ones. But as soon, because these are the different uh, cements, but as soon as we lower the potential, of course, we need a higher content of chloride for depassivating. That is following uh, the, the case of the cathode prevention or the cathode protection. In that case, it's completely logical and is uh, the, what uh, was found by, by Purde as well. I mean, this is basic. Uh, uh, fundamentals of the of the world. And we uh, studied statistically, this was made by Izquierdo, the, the statistical work by David Izquierdo was studying the two uh, ranges, this one on one hand, and after this one, that is different range. He was studying this statistically and uh, came up in 2004 with this distribution that has been shown by, by, by Frank uh, in which we plotted the, the, the probability of corrosion uh, with depending on the chloride content there. And, and these were the, the, the specimens. And uh, also he studied the lower, val the lower field or the lower set of values and uh, this other figure appears. We attributed or I attributed that this is more related because the range of potential so novel are typical of aerated concrete and a non aerated concrete with much lower oxygen content uh, we have another chloride uh, uh, threshold and this has been also emphasized by Rob Melcher with the, the case of the void. Of course in a void uh, as he said you have oxygen and this oxygen is higher than in the in the porosity nearby. And in that case, the potential locally is much novel. In that case, you have a higher probability with lower content of chlorides. I think that he has explained very well. But here is to say that the, the potential changes with the amount of oxygen. If we have a very aerated condition, we have a, a novel potential. If we have a, a less amount of oxygen, we are in this other range of potential. In that case, this is fully uh, coherent. The, uh, uh, the average value for the aerial or the more aerated is 0.7 and in submerged zone it resulted 1.53 with this standard deviation. But what uh, gave uh, value to this work in the laboratory for me was the work of Gro Marquesen that fortunately she will explain later. I really appreciated the work and uh, I think that is very important because this is in real structures. And uh, the, the, the value, I am not going to explain how she obtained because she's going to explain, but he obtained this distribution, the blue distribution in the site, in real structures. And this was our distribution. In that case, it's the same that we you, you work in mortar or you work in the real cases. There is almost no difference in both distributions. That, of course, this is higher because in the real cases, perhaps the chloride threshold is, is detected a bit later or the, the number of pits are higher to, to say that is the passivated. And we consider the passivation the, the first pit. In that case, it's a bit lower. And the other is that the probability of, of uh, corrosion for 0.4% was around 10%, uh, 7% uh, of probability. That is in the distributions, it appears around the 10% the probability is the 0.4. Well, and I have plotted also the, the, 
the figures for the FID that Bright was uh, before us. Bright did a work with several specimens about 95. Bright was working with Peter Sissel and his, uh, his uh, distribution is this one. This is the, the one by FID Bulletin 34 and Frank, uh, after looking in detail that, as you say, uh, is not easy to, to find, I think that this was proposed by Gellen. Gellen changed a bit the distribution of Bright. Bright has this distribution and that is proposed by, by FIB Bulletin 34 is this one. We should ask uh, Christoph Gellen to confirm. But uh, this is the, the, the 31, this is Bright. Uh, this is the, uh, I think, the uh, submerged izquierdo and these are, oh no, this is izquierdo and this is Bright, sorry. Bright is the most conservative. This is Bulletin that increase a bit from 0.5 to 0.6 as average value. This is izquierdo and uh, uh, Marqueset is this one. And this is izquierdo, but in the lower range of potentials. And I plotted in this here the, the, the uh, Welly Ann's publication of, of 16 and 17 that are much later than the other previous. And I plotted them here and what he found is what is known. I mean, it's, it's nothing new. In a, in a structure, uh, well, one is laboratory, this one uh, he did in the laboratory with a specimen, and this is in a, in a single bridge in real structure. And, well, is in between those one. What uh, was my conclusion? My conclusion is, of course, in, it, in each structure, you are going to find a different distribution. In that case, you may find a distribution closer to the most uh, favorable or conservative or, or closer to the uh, less favorable uh, that, that you have. That, that is feasible, is normal, because each concrete is different, different climate, different type of bars. But is within the range. I mean, is nothing is out of the range. In that case, is a distribution that is following the known distribution. And for me, the, the greatest value is that of Marqueset, because she did with real structures and different type of, of, of uh, bridges. Well, uh, this is for Rob Melcher that I had the opportunity to discuss with him previously, and I prepared this in order to illustrate better. You say that all, 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 uh, you don't find corrosion in all uh, structures. There is a question there. We have these blocks, or we had these blocks in a seawater in Spain that had this hook. This is going to be published in Cement and Concrete Research uh, near uh, this hook. And they are completely, now they are uh, about 30 years old, uh, and they are completely contaminated in chloride. They are 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and two, two meters. And the point is that when you open, the, the bars are completely clean, are completely clean because this external hook is acting as cathodic protection. And this is a very simple and direct manner to protect the concrete. And in the old structures, you have sometimes in the tidal zone corrosion of a bit of, of, a bit of corrosion. As soon as you have a, a certain amount of bar corroding or you have hooks, you will have the rest uh, cathodically protected. And in that case is is of course, if your potential is lower than minus 600, you are cathodically protected. And it's normal you don't find corrosion. This is my explanation. Maybe you have other cases that this is not applied. And I would uh, uh, appreciate, Rob, that you could illustrate with other cases. In order to, to start to end, uh, there are variables. The first val values were from Hausmann and Gouda, is above 0.6 of chloride threshold in concrete. 0.4 of chloride by weight of cement, because really to measure the, the hydrocytes in the cement is more complex. And there are a, a, a list of pending questions on the chloride threshold that, as I have as conclusion, I will read later on. The values for design and assessment. Well, uh, for design, we have the codes, and the codes try to control the amount in the raw materials of the concrete. In that case, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 is a good value. It's a conservative lower value. But if you are uh, 
trying to apply for prediction of service life, in that case, this may not be uh, interesting, as, as Frank has said, maybe not sustainable, uh, because it's too, too conservative. In that case, which statistical distribution to select? Uh, the, the, the selection should be made first attending on the consequences of failure. How much important is the structure? What is going to happen? That for engineers is very familiar. They need to select the consequences of corrosion and the importance of the structure. Whether the structural element is in a zone that can be visited or not for inspection, uh, the exposure class, and uh, whether previous testing is feasible or similar country has been already characterized and you have a free idea on which can be the chloride threshold. In that case, you can select a distribution providing that you like to make a probabilistic uh, treatment because if you don't need a probabilistic treatment, you, you have the values of the of the raw materials, or you can take an average value, not the, the most conservative in the, in the distribution. And for the uh, assessment, I would rather prefer the method that uh, will explain will be explained by Gro, Marqueset, because uh, is the, the, the is that that we have a Ryland recommendation, uh, she will explain, or by back extrapolation. I don't like to take course and retest in the lab for the chloride threshold because you are changing the, the condition of the, the temperature and the condition of the of the core. And if you have this profile, you can try to back extrapolation to a lower a lower time and to know how will be what has been the chloride threshold when starting the, the corrosion. Finally I will present that uh, in this moment in at Eurocode 2 and in the model code 2020, we will consider not the actual the passivation as the limit for corrosion, but we have a new corrosion limit state that is when you have a certain amount of corrosion, that means you need to take into account a certain amount of the propagation period that uh, for tipping will be until 500 microns. This is a conventional value you may have more or, or lower, is, is not an average value, is an agreed value, is an expert opinion. In that case, it's a conventional value that may be, it will be changed in the future. But for now, uh, this is what is adopted. And has to be this condition in between the initiation on cracking around the bar to the appearance of the cracking. This corrosion is before we have cracks appearing in the in the surface. And final comments and I finish is there are values of price threshold already for design and assessment, uh, either deterministic or with a statistical distribution, but there are a lot of pending questions and this is for FID and Rylan work. The precise definition, we need to agree which is the definition, which test method and technique to be used because it's in influencing parameter the use of total of free chlorides, only free ions have impact in the metal depassivation and the type of cement uh, will allow different type, amount of free chlorides. However, chlor total chlorides is easier to be measured. Uh, for instance, in the case of slag cement, maybe the higher value comes because it's the total chloride and it's not the free chloride. Maybe talking about free chloride, it will be the same. In fact, in that work that I was talking about, we measure free and total chloride. Uh, and uh, we need models, not only say that uh, there is a, a problem, but we need models for the effect of microstructure, if the voids have an effect. We need a model, not only say that the voids have an effect, that, that is known. Also for the roughness of the, of the type of steel, I mean engineering models. Uh, influence of the type of cement, how to introduce the type of cement into the calculations, and the influence of the aging, the aging exponent, how to introduce that. And this is all. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Carmen, for your presentation and from uh, pointing out several uh, even open aspects. Uh, if you, uh, uh, I don't know if there are some questions from attendance. Otherwise, uh, since you point out really a lot of uh, open questions, maybe we can discuss uh, 
uh, during the last uh, in, in the closing of the webinar. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I would like to thank you for indicating that the statistical analysis and uh, the number of specimens used to evaluate the critical chloride threshold is uh, an important uh, aspect and uh, it, it also needed to be addressed.